Hello everyone, my name is Jackie, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a triangulated surface on top of a dome surface. I will be demonstrating all the features in SOLIDWORKS that will accomplish this, along with the strategy that I used to model and set up the surfaces beforehand. Let's take a look. The first thing we will need to get started is a surface that will be adequate enough for this project. Therefore, I've decided that the route that I will be taking is to generate the surfaces first via a lofted solid. This can easily be done by drawing two sketches and then afterwards creating the lofted geometry. Notice that I chose the solid route and that I decided to add a couple more lots of profiles positioned in a way that it will fill in this triangular path. The reason is that in the next steps, we want to ensure that SOLIDWORKS has the easiest path to multiply this group of lots. Before doing this, I will create a new sketch of a rectangle that will ensure we will have enough of these bumps to fill in this area. I just noticed the problem, so let's take a moment to explain why we need to do this. The fill pattern requires a solid body, hence the solid route we chose before, but the issue comes from how the loft is currently separated into three bodies. To demonstrate, I will attempt to combine the bodies and SOLIDWORKS is going to bark at us. This is due to a phenomenon labeled as zero thickness geometry. A very simple trick is to create extra material that shares the same profile, but instead of combining the edges, we're going to combine the faces. The fill pattern works by simply picking the one body and entering the correct dimensions. This can then all be combined into one single body. Now that we finished the first part, the second part is to build the curved surface to wrap the surface around. To do this in the most minimalistic way, I will be using the dome feature by modeling a very simple cylinder. The dome will ensure that the surface is completely smooth from the face up and that we will maintain a nice transition between the flat and the curve. Before we start the process, I want to mention that currently our two bodies are still solids. But the next part, we're going to transform the solids by simply offsetting the surfaces we want. This idea comes from the fact that we did want surfaces all along, but it was much easier to model them as solids. The final step is to deform this surface on top of a dome. We will select the surface push option along with the other two surfaces. There are a couple limitations that we will need to keep an eye on. By simply rotating the surface around, we notice that deformation occurs due to the direction of pull being from the top. We simply wouldn't be able to take the surface and wrap it around without this occurring. But also to note would be how relatively close the surfaces line up. This is due to the deviation setting that lets us place the surface as close as possible to the dome without it falling too far outside. Lastly, 
I will trim the surface out just to keep the area we deformed. The surface can be used gently to model the shape we want back into a solid. Using a boss extrude with any surface condition, we've gone from a surface back into a solid. 